Angular helps us build dynamic web applications, but we haven't seen all that it can do just yet. Today, we'll be using a directive to help simplify our code and make it more modular. We will be building off our to-do list application from last time, so feel free to download the code below if you don't have it. Right now, we have a to-do list here, but what if we wanted to add a to-buy list, or even better, a books I need to buy list since school is coming up? We can do this by adding some more code to our index.html, and so we're going to go ahead and add a little h3 here, and it's going to be things I need to do, and then we'll have another list that is books I need to buy. The content of these two lists may be different, but the way they're going to be coded is very similar, and that's where our directive is going to come in. More on that later, but for now we're going to go over to our main controller and edit the way we organize this data a bit. Now here we're going to change list to to-do, save that, and then we're actually going to make this an object that's going to hold a bunch of stuff about our to-do list. And the first thing, of course, is the list, but we'll add more to this object later. And then we're going to do the same thing for our books list. Then we're going to add some parameters to our add item function so that way it works for both the books list and the to-do list, and so adding them here. And now we can add any item to any list depending on how we call this function add item. Going back to our index.html, we're going to edit our add item call. So we call add item inside of ng click, and we're saying like if we click this button, then go ahead and run this function, but we don't have any parameters. We don't call it with any arguments. And so what we need to do is add to do.list and then the item we want to add, which is going to be add to do because that's what's inside of this input model. And then we'll lowercase that O. Now this may look a little strange because we have to do.list, but remember our actual list is stored inside of the to do attribute of the scope. So when we click the button, we'll go to the controller, we'll do the body of the add item method, item list will be the value of the first argument, which is to do list, and then item will get the value of the second argument, add to do, and then add to do will be added to the to do list, if that makes sense. Now in our HTML, we're going to write some more code that will then add the book list. And so inside of here, we'll write some stuff. This code looks a little bit repetitive. As we said before, the code for the book list and the to-do list is very similar, even though the content is different. Can we make this more concise? Yes, with the directives. Directives help us make our code more modular and concise and allow us to bind certain behaviors to HTML elements. So we'll go ahead into our JS folder here and we're going to create another folder called directives. And then inside of here, we're going to create two files and one is going to be called single list.html. Again, we're going to put it in this directives folder and then we're going to have another file and we're going to call it single list.js. And so this directive is going to like spell out one list, one, you know, to do list, one book list, whatever it is. It's going to help us write that code once and then it will be displayed multiple times throughout the page. And so we'll save this and we'll go back to our single list.html and we are going to want this code to work for both the to-do list and the book list and that means we're going to need parameters. We're going to need some kind of input when we call this directive so we know what to display on the page. We know the format which is what we're going to write here but we don't know what that content might be so we create a variable for it which will then get its value when the function is called. And so what we want this to do if we go back to our index.html we could just copy this because we each of these is going to have a title, you're going to have some kind of iterative thing going on, and we can put this all in a directive. And so we'll have some kind of title. We'll say our parameter's name is my list, and it's going to have you know some kind of property called title, and that's how we'll display the title. And then we'll go in here and change list to my list dot list because in our example, my list will be evaluated to to do or books. And in our controller, we set that as, you know, some kind of thing, an object with a property called list. And so we're going to access this in our single list HTML inside of here. And this may be confusing right now, but it will make more sense in a minute. Also important to note, 
The fact that our code is here instead of in our index.html means our index.html is a smaller file, meaning we don't have much you know, text, we don't have a lot of text. And so I can delete these three lines, these four lines actually, and then I can delete these four lines and now it's a lot smaller. We'll still have to call the directive, but keeping our index.html small is super important and it makes our code more modular because our code is throughout more files. And so say you have an error in your index.html or whatever it is, if it's a shorter file, if there's not a lot of content in that file, then it's easier to narrow down what could be the problem. If it says like, oh, there's an error in this file or this file, then that's great if that file is small, but if you're going through thousands and thousands of lines of code, that's bad. Now this directive isn't done yet. We just wrote you know, the template for what our directive will run, but we still need to set up the fact that this is a directive I can call and it's gonna set some things behind the scenes before this template is run. And so going back to our JS file for our single list, this is gonna be like the end of the second part of our directive. And so we're gonna go app.directive single list function, and we're just gonna write some code here. It's gonna look a little bit like gibberish. So here we set up how our directive will work. We set the value of an item in our scope, my list, and our template URL as the single list.html file path. Basically, when our directive is called in our view, our index.html, the argument will be bound to the parameter, my list, which will then be added as an attribute to the scope, as we can see with this, you know, scope object here. Then with the parameters value set in scope, the directive will take the code in the template URL, you know, right here in this file path, which is the file we created before, our single list.html, and this will be inserted into wherever we call it from. In this, in this case, it will be our index.html. So we'll go ahead with our directive, we'll set everything up, we'll set up the scope, we'll set up the template URL, and then we'll go ahead and with our scope in place, we'll run this code and then wherever it was called, our index.html, we'll plunk it in there and it will be ready to go. It's a nice little template that we can call multiple times with different data and it helps make our code a lot cleaner. Now all we need to do is import this directive down here. We'll just do a quick import. And you're gonna import the JS file and that will in turn import the single list.html because it's linked with the template URL. Now we just have to call this directive in our index.html and it's just gonna be one quick little line of code. We'll go single list. We'll set the parameter my list equal to to do because that's our object that we want to set it to. If we go back to our main controller, we have this object to do and inside of it, it has a list. And so we have this to do and then we'll go ahead and close the single list directive. And then we'll go ahead and copy and paste this and put it right above our input model here. And we're going to change the value of my list to now books. And again, that's the book thing that we set in the controller. And so if we go to our single list.html, we notice that, you know, to do and books, they're supposed to have this property called title and it's not set yet in the controller. And so we can go ahead and set this. We can say title. So now with our data set, we'll go ahead and try to open this in our index.html. And we have some problems. If we go into inspect, Basically, we have this XML, HTTP request cannot load, and this has to do with security, but we can get rid of this by using a module called HTTP server, and to do that, we'll open the command line. This is a little detour in our Angular. We'll go ahead and write CD. This will bring us into our JS folder, but we wanna be one on top of that, so we'll do CD dot dot, and this will bring us one back up, so we're in the desktop in our command line, and we're gonna to need to use NPM to get our module. And if you don't have NPM, you can download it down below, but here, if you have it, you're gonna go NPM install HTTP server dash G, and this will install it globally. And so you'll be able to use this for everything. And so it's installing some stuff, and it's pretty much already installed, so that's good. And now we can just do HTTP server, it'll be running. We'll go ahead and copy this link, paste it over here, run it, and there's our list, great. Now our code is short and sweet and does everything we wanted to do as of right now. But what if when we added some ISBN number here, it changed this you know, number into a little blurb with the title and the author and that was added to you know, the books I need to buy list versus the number. That's what we'll do next Friday with the Google Books API. See you then.